What's the word, y'all? Game one of the NBA Finals have wrapped, and I do not feel good. You know, if you watch my preview, I didn't care. I don't care who wins this series. I got players on the Lakers that I really like. I have players on the Heat that I really like. So I am a neutral, unbiased fan in this final series. So much so that I didn't even give a prediction because it doesn't really matter. All that I wanted to see on the court was good games because that's what the fans want. Listen, these are the last couple games we're going to get for a few months, so I want them all to be greatness. And game one didn't, didn't live up to that. Game one didn't live up to that. So before we get into it, be sure to leave a like on the video and subscribe if you are new. Kenny Farrell has been a channel that has been taking off kind of uh, recently, and uh, I want to continue that streak, so leave a like and subscribe if you are new. I'm not going to say daily, but we talk about basketball on here on the reg, so if you like hoops, this is the place to be. Let's keep it a buck. Okay, so game one just wrapped. Um, not officially. It's still a couple minutes left. But, I mean, something, Alonzo Mourning, Dwayne Wade, 25-year-old LeBron James, Ray Allen, Chris Bosh would all have to suit up in these last couple minutes for, for the Miami Heat to have a chance. And even then, they probably wouldn't come back. So that's where we're at. So much so that LeBron just went to the bench and took his shoes off. Game, <laughs> game over. Game over. But, again, the reason why I don't feel great about it is not just because game one was a blowout because – We've seen plenty of times before that a team comes out in game one, maybe doesn't look great. In the game two, they look great. Game three, they look great. So I'm not saying the series is over by any means. We're going to talk about the series, but I am definitely not saying it's over by any means. But the reason why I don't feel good is all the things that happened in this game. Basically, the three best players for the Miami Heat went out with their own kind of injury. Uh, maybe not went out, but went down with their own kind of injury. We saw Jimmy Butler tweak his, his ankle twice, at least twice. Shoot, he could it could have happened in the last couple minutes while I was setting up this video. I ain't been watching. It's over. This game is over. So at least twice, Bam Adebayo had to get pulled because he what they're saying is a shoulder strain. And I guess I just found out that Bam Adebayo is afraid of needles, so he didn't take any painkillers after the Boston series because he heard it in the Boston series, and that was something we talked about. Right? It happened like late in the game. He was holding his shoulder. He didn't take any painkillers because he don't like needles. Something we learned about Bam Adebayo today. And then Goran Dragic hurt his ankle so much so there was there was a guy on Twitter, and I don't want you to take this as as gospel as as one hundred percent true because I don't really know. And maybe by the time this video is out, we'll have more information. But there was one guy who on Twitter his bio says he an insider, and he was followed by some pretty prestigious guys in the NBA world. So I'm not saying this is true, but based on what he said. They're they're basically saying that Goran Dragic might be out for the rest of the series. Heartbreaker. Absolute heartbreaker. Absolute heartbreaker. If if Goran Dragic is out for the series, shoot. Call it a wrap. Kendrick Nunn gave them some good minutes when they were down by 30, but Goran Dragic had been the top scorer for this team. He had been a guy that hit big, big time shots. And if he is out, it's just it's just gonna hurt the whole series. So I'm hoping. I'm hoping that that was false. They took x-rays, but I, don't, I haven't got a notification yet about, yeah, I haven't got a notification yet about what the x-rays came to. Ben Matabayo's x-rays were negative, so that's a good thing. They're saying it, saying it was just a shoulder strain, so hopefully he'll be good to go for game number two. I want everybody to be healthy, and to see the top three guys from Miami, he go out with some type of injury is bad, and it's, it's bad for all of us fans, even if you're a Lakers fan, right? Of course you want to see your team win a championship, but you also want to see the best possible matchup, right? If all three of those guys have to miss some time, and Solomon Hill is playing 40 minutes a game, that's not that's not the championship you want, but but it is it is a championship. It is a championship. So I was watching this game, and there's a few things that I actually wrote down for the first time. Just one bullet point, one sentence bullet points. The first one is LeBron just is play, just played his fiftieth finals game. Of course, we know he's been to the finals a thousand times. It seems like, but fiftieth finals games is something that you don't really think about till you till you hear it, and it is ridiculous. Fiftieth finals game, check. Um, the size on guarding Anthony Davis is something that Eric Spolster experimented a lot with today. Basically started off where they had Jay Crowder guarding Anthony Davis. And if you remember my preview video, one thing I was saying was that I would expect Eric Spolster to mirror Anthony Davis's minutes with Bam Adebayo's minutes because there's nobody else on this Miami Heat roster that can do anything with Anthony Davis other than Bam Adebayo is the only guy that has a chance. And it's a chance. But somehow they, they came out, they started off with Jay Crowder on Anthony Davis and it was a grub session. They switched up to Solomon Hill early in the game. It was a grub session. Uh, Derrick Jones Jr. got some run. It was a grub session. So they try to come out and, and try to use these smaller defenders as the idea to, to really bother Anthony Davis. And he looked right over them boys and gave them 30-plus. Yeah. I understand that what, what Eric Spolster was trying to do. 
Um, I would never really question Eric Spolster. There's a reason he's known as one of the greatest coaches in the league. I understand what he's trying to do. Um, but again, I would much rather see Bam Adebayo on Anthony Davis just because it is Anthony Davis and Bam Adebayo is just that good defensively, right? But I understand not wanting Bam Adebayo on him full time because Bam Adebayo also has this crazy load on the offensive side of the ball. But we're going to have to get to the point where we need him to guard Anthony Davis and do his thing offensively. The only problem with that is that, well, now he has a shoulder strain and you're asking him to do all of this by game three, game four, he might be drained. So I understand them coming out there and trying to try to allow um, Anthony Davis to be guarded by somebody else, but it just can't be the case. He's too good. He's just... I remember the narrative about Anthony Davis two years ago. So to see him do something like this in the finals makes me happy. Makes me, It does make me happy. Um, but again, Eric Spoelstra, similar to last season, came out. He's like, we're going to run this zone. The Lakers have the potential to be a great three-point shooter team, but they haven't really been able to do that. But game one, they were. I think the statistic is they are undefeated when they shoot over 30% from three. 30%. I think league average is 35%. So as long as they're even close to being average at three-pointers, they're going to win the game. Um, in this game, they did that, right? KCP came out. He had some big-time shots, made some early shots to get it going. Danny Green, same thing. One thing I was worried about for the Heat was that, like, because they are a, I would say, inexperienced team, because they're they're not young. They have some young players, but they're not a young team. Jimmy's this old. Uh, Drogic is this old. Like, they have veterans. Jay Crowder, uh, Iggy is the old, one of the oldest players in the league. They just don't have much experience at this level, at the finals level. And one thing I was afraid of is that, like, they're going to be like, oh, snap, we're actually in the finals. We're kind of, ooh, we're going to come out slow. And they didn't do that. They came out fire, on fire. And then the Lakers are like, you know what, we, we can do the same thing. Right, so you got KCP, uh, you have Danny Green hitting their shots against the zone, and of course that's the main thing. If the if a team can hit the threes against the zone, the zone does not work. And another thing, another thing that really hurts the zone is driving and kicking. And you got arguably the best driver and kicker of all time in LeBron James, and you also have another one of the greatest passes of all time, Rondo, on the court as well. So they have like this recipe to destroy the zone, and that's also what you saw in today's uh, today's game as well. Something you also saw in today's game as well. But, again, I didn't come into this hoping for anything. I'm hoping for health at this point. I'm hoping for health. And one thing I noticed halfway through this game, I hate I hate NBA Twitter. And, I, I listen, I'm not going to watch the daytime TV shows, but I know what they're about to say tomorrow when you turn it on. Every, listen to me when I say this, and I, I want you all to hear me loud and clear. Every ring in NBA existence counts. You know why I'm saying that? Because I've already seen tweets with thousands of retweets, or at least close to it, that are saying that this is about to be the easiest ring ever, and it doesn't weigh well with some of the other rings. That's stupid. That's stupid. If LeBron and the LA Lakers go out to win this ring, this ring is just as valuable as pretty much any ring in the history of basketball. Let me tell you their argument for why this ring does not mean anything. Um, I guess LeBron and them went against some some bad injuries. They didn't have to face the Clippers. The Clippers got their ass handed to them by the team that they actually end up beating. So I, I, I don't understand that. Um, and they ran into some injuries. But one thing I've, I've never understood that. Because as a team that is in the finals, a team of any sport, your one objective is to win the basketball game, to win the game. I talked to Draymond Green. It's a little flex. It's a little flex. I talked to Draymond Green, and we talked about the first championship that they won. Right? Kind of came, kind of came out of nowhere with that first ring. You know what I'm saying? And one thing he said is that the most important things when it came to them winning their ring is, of course, execution, of course, and a little bit of luck. Every team that goes on to win a championship does run into a little bit of luck. You just have to execute on it. You have to execute on it. You're going to see injuries. This is a sport. This is a sport. You're going to see injuries. But your job is to play your hardest no matter who is guarding you. So last year, when KD goes down, when Klay Thompson's go down, can you imagine if Kyle Lowry walked to the locker room and was like, man, they ain't 100%. We shouldn't play. We shouldn't play hard tonight. No, we're going to play against whoever is in front of us. Kyle Lowry's rings mean a lot. You can disagree with what Kevin Durant did to get his rings. Those rings still count a lot. 
I've never understood it. The game of any sport is to win and win against anybody. So, sure, when Steph Curry and him won their first ring, um, you saw Russell Westbrook get injured. You saw Mike Conley get injured. And I think it was one more big injury that I cannot – I mean, we're talking about five years ago now, coming some slack. But at the end of the day, they still had to go out there and win those games. They had to go out there and win those games. So if LeBron wins this championship, it's a ring, and it's an important one. If the Miami Heat come back, it's a ring, and it's an important one. I just, I've just never understood it. And, and anybody that I've talked to with this narrative, this idea, have never been able to explain to me. Never been able to explain to me. Tell me your ideal championship that counts. Dirk's championship? Sure, of course. The 4 Pistons, sure, of course. But at the end of the day, when we're looking back on things 50 years from now, nobody's going to remember the teams that you went to to get that championship. They're going to be like, Dirk, NBA champion. Chauncey Billups, NBA champion. LeBron, however many he ends up with. I don't. Again, I'm not counting the heat off by any means. This is game one. They're not going to go through every single series that you went against. Oh, my God, LeBron didn't have to face Kawhi in the year where Kawhi's team had no chemistry. I just, it just doesn't make sense to me. It just doesn't make sense to me. I am not writing off the Miami Heat. That is like my hundredth time saying that, but I mean that. I mean that. I hope that the Gordon Dragic rumor is false, that, it, that he can play. I hope that Bam Adebayo comes back from the shoulder strain and it doesn't hinder his play. I hope that Jimmy Buckers... Bu- bu- Buckers. Jimmy Butler's ankle tweak is nothing to be concerned about. Because at the end of the day, as a basketball fan, I want every team to be at 100%. That's it. Um, let me know what you're thinking about game one, man. I If you said Lakers in four, I wouldn't call you crazy. But if you also said Heat in six, I couldn't call you crazy, man. It takes a couple games for, for you to really gauge things, right? I, was, I would think that the Miami Heat would have came out and try to solidify themselves as LeBron's teams usually don't do good game one in the finals. So I was hoping um, that they came out because, I mean, sure, you're down 1-0. You never want to have your back against the wall against LeBron. It's just the truth. It's just the truth. Let me know what y'all think about this whole ring situation, the the accounting of rings, the the purity of them, if you will. And maybe I'll, I'm going to read all the comments, so maybe you're able to explain it to me. Maybe I'm dense and I just don't understand. I'll see y'all. I'm not going to say tomorrow. I don't know when. I'll see y'all after the next game probably. Peace.